Good morning. Um, welcome to Yorkshire Business Journal. Today I'm with Tom Abbott and uh, Dave Toms, founders of The Mooch. Would you please like to introduce yourselves? Yeah, sure. I'm Tom Abbey. Um, I'm the managing director of Cares Laboratory, which actually has the Vermouche um, trademark and brand. And um, I'm Dave Toms. Um, I'm the other director of Cares. Um, I suppose uh, my background is that I'm a chemist, um, innovator, and, and product developer. Thank you so much. So, what made you want to create a company tailored to cleaning? Um, well, Dave and myself have known each other for the last 30 years. Um, I ran a chemical um, printing and dye business, and Dave was working for a company called Dylon, which was um, producing the dyes for washing machines. Um, and over the years, Dylon got bought by various different companies. And in the end, it got bought by Henkel. And Dave wasn't that keen to move to Germany. So we started talking and thought it would be a great idea to pool our knowledge. And we felt that the laundry business, we've both been involved in it because of testing fabrics and textiles, would be a good place to start. Yeah, I guess, guess for me, um, it's an industry I've always been in. Um, so I started in a laboratory when I was 18, um, working on cleaning products. And, and I've always been in, in cleaning products, um, or at least cleaning products and household associated products like like the fabric dyes Tom mentioned. Um, so although I've gone on to run R&D teams, I've done other roles, there has always been this, this laundry and cleaning part of what I've done. So, so when Tom suggested CARES or what became CARES, it was a, a sort of natural progression. Did you find it hard branching out into this industry? Do you want to start that Dave or do you want me to? Well, yeah i mean i i guess probably yes hard um probably no harder than branching out into any other industry i think you know when you're a startup it is tough um you start with hopefully some ideas but you have nothing else um you have no products you have no brand you have no patents and intellectual property um so yeah it, it, it is tough um i think the cleaning industry is a, is a tough one. Um, it is a big industry and therefore there are a lot of competitors and there are some very big companies. So if you think of Procter & Gamble and Unilever, for example, they're some of the world's biggest companies and most successful companies. So, so yeah, it was tough. And um, I think like all startups, we had some tough times. Um, I, I think in many ways, the first year was was the easiest because we weren't trading. Um, so we spent a year on some ideas and some 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 laboratory work and developing products, and that turned out to be the easy bit. I, I think once we launched, the, the reality of having no customers, um, no awareness really hits you. Um, and probably a year into trading was the hardest time for us. Um, you know, we, we uh, maybe the product wasn't quite right. Um, lots of new products aren't quite right. It wasn't quite right, and our, our third formulation was the one that that. That was the breakthrough there um and then gaining some awareness and um mrs hinch picked up on our product uh, yeah. mrs hinch is the, the famous instagrammer cleaning instagrammer um we sent her some samples and luckily she loved the product and she featured it um and that really was the thing that then kick-started the awareness which which you need yeah yeah i think i think what actually happened is when you set up a business you believe that the sales part would be the easy part and developing the products is the difficult part and not really understanding social media as much as we probably should have done when we started. We thought we'd just put it on, so, on social media, put it on Instagram and we'd have a, an immediate following and it just didn't turn out that way. Um, and it was just a lot of hard work, um, working with uh, various different design, design and marketing agencies and also then with Nikki who joined the business to get that awareness. And, Mrs. Hinch, as Dave said, was the breakthrough. Um, and after that, we were actually getting supermarkets calling us. So it's been it's been a good journey. Oh, brilliant. You've mentioned, obviously, from the previous question um, that the industry is competitive. What sets you aside from the competition? I, I guess being small has its advantages and disadvantages. Um, you know, so companies like P&G obviously have um massive resources um 
massive advertising budgets, massive R&D budgets, and a lot of very skilled people all the way through the business. Um, so it's a much more muscle than a small company. On the other hand, a small company can move faster. Um, so we can bring th things to the market more quickly um, because there are far less people involved, far less steps, far, far less hurdles. Um, and we can make quick decisions. And, and I think also, one of the really big advantages of a, a small company is that you can have the courage of your convictions. So Pet Head is over, which was our first product and, and, and our, our, our basis of the business, uh, was Tom's idea. Um, and we didn't go through consumer research like a big company would do. We didn't have the doubts that a big company would have. We didn't have dissenting voices. You know, that was the product we were going to launch. We launched it, had the courage of our convictions um, and, and were able to, to execute it quickly. And also, because we're not driven by big corporate as well, where you have to get a development through and finished within the first three months, six months, we could take our time to make sure we got it right. So, you know, the pet head dissolver took us over a year to develop um, and to patent and to protect. And I think the, the whole core of the business is to try and find new technology and do things differently where we can get some protection on it. And that allows us to stay competitive in the market and not just be copied all the time. I think that's a good point. I, I think, you know, um, we could to an extent afford to fail. Um, as I said earlier, maybe our first formulation wasn't where we would have wanted it to have been, um, and the product didn't have commercial success. Um, we were probably able to hang on a little bit longer than a big company would have done. I think a big company would have said, okay, this isn't working. It's not working from a formulation point of view. It's not selling. Let's move on to the next thing. Um, we didn't actually have a next thing to move on to. So we, we yeah. hung on longer uh, and we were able to do some more formulations, um, carry on working you know, with the social media and um, you know, the Instagrammers and, and eventually to crack it. I don't think a bigger organization would have given us the second or third chance that, that we were able to do. Yeah, you've mentioned social media with Mrs. Hinch. Um, is it like a platform that you use to target a lot of your customers? It is, yeah. Um, I suppose one of the, the big differences now is the, the, the web, um, social media, Instagrammers, you know, compared with even you know, 10, 15 years ago. Um, 10 or 15 years ago, if you wanted to get your product known, you only really had the choice of TV advertising or um, magazine advertising, but with big budgets. Um, and what you can do with social media is you can start off with a very small budget that sort of is tailored to, to how much resources you have. So you can spend 25 pounds a day on Facebook advertising or Amazon advertising, and you can actually get a return on it. And then as your sales build, you can spend more money. So I think that that's one aspect of us, you know, of it. That wasn't the really big breakthrough, but it did give us some sales initially. And then, as we said earlier, the bigger opportunity probably for smaller companies is to get the interest of big Instagrammers in the right category for you. Um, and that was Mrs. Hinch for us, but it was also Lindsay Queen of Clean, um, who we have a very good relationship with. Um, so probably the Instagrammers, on the social media was the bigger side of things, but also social media advertising was, was, has always been significant for us. But I think also we're not just a social media company. We are selling in big retail now. We're in 4,000 UK stores um, and have been approached by a number of other people since we won the Queen's Award. So, you know, we want to be in retail, not just on, online. Yeah, which makes 100% sense. Um, what are your ambitions for the future? Do you plan on expanding or adding more products to your line? Well, y yes, we are doing. We're, we are working with MPD all the time. Uh, we get our marketing team, we get our, um, our lab team, and we all get together and just kind of work out products we think we can do something different to in the market. And uh, we've got some really exciting products coming through at the moment. One which is a massive energy saving in the laundry market. So we're just putting the patents together with that now. We're working with some universities too to finish off the final designs and um, product. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a very exciting future. 
I think at the moment in, in the UK, we have extremely good distribution. Um, so we have, for example, B&M and Pets at Home. We're two of the country's top retailers. Um, but the supermarkets is probably an area where we're looking to expand. Um, so, so that really is with the current products to target in the UK. Um, and there's some, some conversations ongoing at the moment. And then export is, is a great opportunity for us. Um, at the moment, probably 98% of our sales are UK. Um, there are, you know, with our pet head is older technology, there are pets in, in every other major country in the world, yeah. um, and sometimes a lot more than in the UK. So there are great opportunities for us for, for export. So, so really, it's supermarkets, export and new products. Yeah, I'm thinking of getting some pet hair dissolver for my <laughs> dogs. <laughs> We also dissolve. We also dissolve human hair, so we have a washing machine cleaner product that. Um, my dad would love that. <laughs> that cleans the washing machine as well. Um, what would you say your biggest achievement is today? For me, winning the Queen's Award, um, I think that's been a massive, massive achievement. Um, and I, you've got to say, you know, so few companies win a Queen's Award for innovation, and it's a, a great testament to to the Vamoosh team. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think, yeah, it's, it's, it's sort of the ultimate endorsement of what we're trying to do. Um, we are trying to innovate. Um, we are trying to be successful commercially with those innovations. And, and really, they are the main two criteria for the Queen's Award for Innovation. Um, so so we, we have an innovation that's patented um, that gives commercial success and, and fulfills, fulfills the need of the consumer. Uh, and yeah, the, the, the Queen's Award is the ultimate sort of uh, recognition of that. So yeah. it's um, something we need to do again. So I'm going to um, say it's a really big achievement. <laughs> yeah, something we're very proud of. Obviously, it's new news. It's only uh, last month that we found out. So yeah, it's very exciting. Oh, well, congratulations. Thank, thank you. you very much. Oh, it's all right. Uh, that's all the questions i'd just like to say thank you so much for your time and willing to speak to us about your business thank you very thank much. you very much thank Been you great.